the brain is an incredible, incredible almost machine. It has a hundred billion neurons, um, trillions upon trillions of connections. So understanding what we're doing, we can't really get that, especially when it comes to stress. Um, there's so much happening. The World Health Organization has dubbed stress as the health epidemic of the 21st century. Uh, the American Psychological Association has linked stress to all the six leading causes of death. Mental Health America estimates that one in five teenagers are clinically depressed right now. And what's sort of hard about this is going back to the brain is there's so much happening and a lot of this is actually subconscious and these patterns start to develop and we aren't aware of them. So they sometimes call it a closed neural feedback loop. Okay, so why are we here? Um, I am Kayla Lee Lander, and I am in this because I uh, found stress relief um, and helping people through meditation, teaching these stress reduction techniques. I work at the VA center. I work with individuals with PTSD, traumatic brain injuries. I teach at Clemson University, um, personal training, so for the physical body, nutrition, any way your body can be out of balance, I can at least try to help or have some background in that. And my co-founder, founder, Dr. Rebecca Heiss, she is a stress physiologist. And one thing that we both had in common was that we both worked with youth in an educational environment. And we saw that these young individuals were under such stress and such pressure. So going back to that last statistic, that you know, one in six are clinically depressed. You know, what does that mean for adulthood? And so that's where we came into the idea of biologic balance and helping people come back to balance. And that's where I want to introduce stress as cortisol. Okay, so you've probably heard of stress, but you might have not heard of this glucocorticoid hormone cortisol. It is naturally produced by our body, and it does some good things, and it's also released in response to stress or our fight or flight response. So you might think of if you almost get hit by a car or if you get an email from a boss, um, something like that. And for our company, Biologic Balance, we are talking specifically about salivary cortisol, so what would be in your spit, because in the industry, medical and professional, this saliva cortisol is frequently used as a biomarker of stress, okay? And it's representative of the bio biologically active fraction that can interact and cause a response in the body. So, I want to step back and look at our ancestors' stress. So when their stress response happened, they were doing a few things. They were fighting, they were fleeing, or potentially they froze. Okay, so that was sort of the basis. That's what they needed. They would have a stimuli like a woolly mammoth. The woolly mammoth would leave, and then their adrenal system, their body would recover. Okay, so I don't know about Arizona or cat where you are, but we do not have woolly mammoths in South Carolina. Um, but we do have our own modern stressors that you might be able to relate to. So, disrupted sleep, overstimulation travel, mortgage, maybe cat planning your, um, all your workshops and your schedule, skipping meals, unhealthy food, news, traffic jams, too much to do, too little time. It gets overwhelming. Uh, it really is just so much stimuli that our body doesn't have the actual time to recover. So I actually have a background in environmental toxicology. And a big concept I want to just introduce is exposures and responses. So you can see the arrow that says stressor. Um, I would think of a stressor as an exposure. And then that increase in the line, the increase in cortisol concentrations, is the response. Okay? In a normal situation, there would be a stressor, cortisol increases, and then we recover. There may be a few little bumps throughout the day, but for the most part, we stay steady. Thinking back to that previous slide of traffic, boss, 
no sleep, too much to do, work stress, family stress, etc. What happens is, is we don't have time to recover. Okay, so this might be what um, someone would have chronic stress. They would always be up a little bit higher. You can think of um, that I got to, got to, got to, got to, got to brain or the constant worry. Okay, and when we are up this high all the time, there are a few things that happen. You know, uh, you may be nervous, maybe depression or anxiety creeps in, unexplained headaches, negative mood, loneliness, agitation, being overwhelmed, frustration, and the list goes on. Uh, and the thing is, is to know that these symptoms or these what how this manifests it is a normal reaction it's what our body does almost as a protection mechanism so this is why it's so valuable to quantify stress yes there are incredible benefits of acute stress a little stressor and it bumps us up maybe to get ready for a talk for metabolic function for exercise physical performance maybe athletes however there are more adverse effects of chronic stress than benefits of acute stress. Okay, so this might be increased appetite, cravings for fats and sugars, weight gain, depressed immune system, decreased serotonin and dopamine, that's the happy chemicals or hormones, intensified aging process, decreased brain cells and ability to learn, and lower testosterone and sex drive. And so this is um, something that a lot of people in, I know, my own community and in our country and throughout the world are experiencing right now. And there's, that's why I think there's even more of a need to help come back to balance. So right now, a lot of people think of relief and they may think, oh, I'm going to go on vacation, uh, whether it's Maui or, you know, maybe just staying in for the night or something to just relax. But the reality is, is that our stressors are continuous throughout the day. We live in such a modern world, um, but we still have this ancestral brain that's getting ready to prep, to fight or flight. Okay, we have more stimuli in one day than our ancestors ever did. So that's why knowing your cortisol levels and starting to assess your stress and integrate awareness is really empowering. It provides you with the knowledge so that you can make decisions, or in the case of your client. So the theme of um, biologic balance is finding balance. So you can see on the x-axis that we have stress levels, and on our y-axis we have performance. So there's a sweet spot where we have a, our average or normal stress level, cortisol level, and optimal performance. Okay, that's where we'd all like to be, but with our crazy world and all the things we have to do, it's not always the case. So I'm going to show you a few scenarios that we see in measuring cortisol at biologic balance and why those are important. The first um, little introduction to this is understanding your stress profile. And so I'm sure you know we follow a circadian rhythm. In the morning we start to wake up. Uh, throughout the day, we start to slow down. At night, we rest, hopefully a very sound sleep. And if our cortisol level follows this natural curve, you can see those dots pretty close to the green um, dashed line, then we're probably going to be okay. Uh, but there's some other situations where this isn't the case. So sometimes our cortisol levels can be below the normal range. Uh, the first example of this is actually chronic fatigue. So if you're a trainer or um, if you are in the wellness industry and you have a client come in and say, I am just exhausted in the afternoon, maybe this could be a piece of that. Okay. A uh, similar piece or similar uh, stress pattern or stress profile is burnout. Okay, so burnout is when we actually don't have that initial increase in cortisol in the morning, which is called, um, they call it CAR or cortisol awakening response. So in between waking and the first day hour, our cortisol can increase by 60 to 80%, and that gets us going in the morning. 
if you have if you're burnt out you you don't get going that's complete grogginess exhaustion mental physical everything the other side of this is when stress levels are higher than the average and this is what we probably think of with a lot of people in our very busy world and that looks like chronic stress and i'd like to point out that by chronic what I really mean here is someone that has multiple intermittent continuing stressors or stimuli. So whether that's you wake up in the morning and you have traffic, there's the mortgage payment, there's the meeting, the this, the picking up the kids, and the list goes on. It's the people that aren't getting a break and or that don't have the coping skills to help recover. And so, Looking at our stress profile, this can really tell us a lot or help guide our clients with where to start. So if they're chronically stressed, that could help include, hey, how, what are our recovery programs? Maybe diet, exercise, mindfulness, the new level-headed app. Um, for someone with burnout, you don't want someone with burnout going to do a high-intensity exercise. Um, that may actually put them further down, so that's a certain awareness. Uh, chronic fatigue, that would be a whole other set of criteria that you would use to develop a plan for them. And maybe you're normal, or maybe your clients are normal, and that is still valuable information. Uh, it's at least a starting point so we know where we're going and where we've been. 